God! It's Tim Macy! Good morning. What's going on? Oh, my gosh. I'm excited about having you on, my brother. David, i got to be honest. You don't seem excited. Your energy level seems a little low right now. If you you could pick it up for me, I'd greatly appreciate it. I'll try to turn it up. Uh, So, brother, right before we're coming on, literally the countdown starts, and it goes (laughs) five, four, three, and you go, I'm not wearing any pants right now. (laughs) Well, hey, I just thought I should point it out. I like having honest, open conversations. I love uh, it. I do so many of these, like, you know, webcam conferences. I mean, I already had two this morning. You're the third one. Yeah. Um, and there's so much of the communication that goes on uh, w- without, you know, leaving the house. Uh, yep. Sometimes I don't put pants on. I don't know. You can hey. judge me for it. It's all hey, good. If you're not wearing pants right now, you're not wearing pants. I'm not going to judge you because <laughs> I'm wearing yoga pants. Oh, all right. All right. I think you just one up me right there. Pretty sure I got one up. Yeah. I got my yoga pants on right now. Uh, those aren't that bad. Those aren't that bad. I thought you had like the tight yoga pants on. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, but you said, hey, that's the perks of uh, working at EXP. If you want to work at home, if you want to wear yoga pants, you mm-hmm. can get your yoga pants on. Yeah, there you go. You can wear whatever you want. And you said this is your third video of the day. Yeah, I had a. Coaching call, um, yeah. had some marketing call. We, we do like mastermind groups and we do Zoom meetings pretty much for everything. And yeah. then um, we use the cloud for like, you know, I got to go into the cloud and get with accounting and agent services and whatnot. And so between those two Dude. platforms, get a ton done without yeah. having to like drive to the office and find a parking space, sit in traffic and all that other BS. Why are you not going into the office more? Why are you not meeting with people? Why aren't you scheduling more appointments? So... We do in in the, the first lazy, the first out, part of our drive out and meet with people. Yeah. Millennials. So uh, the first part of my day should be lead generation, and the second half should be scheduling appointments where we're actually going out to meet people. But sure. that first half of the day um, doesn't need to be spent in rush hour traffic going to the office. The first half of the day we can do from here, and then like you said, we're going to get out, we're going to go meet buyers and sellers, we're going to go drop signs at listings and all that fun stuff. Yes. And I can tell you, my efficiency has shot through the roof the moment that I started telling people, hey, listen, I meet online. Yeah. Let's have a meeting online. Let's knock it out right now. And I can tell you, yeah. even how I got offered, you know, becoming the president of VA rep and, you know, you know handling the PR for uh, the president of VA rep in Riverside, Dave Clark, mm-hmm. I got offered the job online. We had an online meeting. We talked about it. We crushed it out with him and Dustin, um, who, of course, is the national head, uh, you know, VP, I think, of uh, a VA uh, VA rep. And we got it all done online. Yeah. There's no reason to go out and talk to people in person. People do not want to meet with you. Well, and the other thing, too, is it's like I got uh, Bill Pipes on an interview, right? Bill Pipes, pretty pretty big time coach. Um, I got him next week. And you know how much harder it would have been if I had to schedule to meet him somewhere as yeah. opposed to, Bill, all you got to do is be in front of a computer with a webcam and we yes. can do it like that. It just makes everything way easier. I mean, we wouldn't have this meeting if we had to go meet each other in person at an office and, and do stuff. So, yeah, I love leveraging this technology. The people that you and I are collaborating with at this point, we're talking about collaborating in time zones. We have to yeah. say, hey, listen, we're going hey. to meet you at 9 o'clock PST. Yeah, which is always always a challenge for me, man. I don't know how many times I've 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 messed that up. I got to get better at that. <laughs> I had the same thing just last week with Nick Baldwin and Tristan when we did the yeah. LCA interview. Uh, it was just like, oh, oh my gosh, Pacific Coast time. So it's one of those things that uh, that I always tell people: if you're getting frustrated with some of your small local minds, start yeah. masterminding with big minds on a national level. Well, it's funny you bring that up. It's like. I talk to a lot of agents in town and they're like, Hey, are you going to this? Are you going to that? Like, do you know so-and-so? And I don't, I, I don't know local agents as well as I should because yeah. I'm just so engulfed in trying to network with agents that aren't in my area. I'm yeah. much more attracted to like the cool things people are doing in Cali or what the guy in New Jersey is doing about. and then bringing those ideas back to San Antonio, but I don't, I don't mastermind much with people in San Antonio, other than obviously my downline, my team, 
is, is sure. you know, I'm trying to take those ideas, bring them back to them and yes. you know, let them go to work. But no, you I don't, don't like know what you don't, don't do know until you realize you don't know it. And then you said, hey, yeah. listen, I go out and I find these ideas on a national level and I bring them back to my downline. Can you explain that really quick to those of us? And your <laughs> downline is going to be uh, larger than a lot of people's downlines, because how long have you been working with EXP? So I've been at EXP for two years and it's funny, yeah. man, like EXP is is growing rapidly but when i came over um honestly i'm i'm like a i'm a pretty conservative guy like as far as like my choices i make and whatnot yeah. um and i did not buy into the hype at all right like i was like all right i you know I'm, I'm i'm in this part of my life i need to go join a new brokerage sounds interesting i'm not buying into all that crap i'm just gonna buy and sell houses yeah but, i mean what happens is is like i do a deal I meet an agent. They're like, oh, you're at EXP. And I'm like, yeah, I'd love to work with you. Boom, they come over, right? Like that stuff started naturally happening. I wasn't actively going out there trying to attract agents, but yeah. naturally just started to grow. In By the, being who you are, yeah. people want to gravitate towards you yeah. just to be around you by proximity. And then you're able to work with them and collaborate with them online. Exactly. And, and so even, even locally though, because you do deals with agents all the time, if you're a decent person, most of the time you build some sort of relationship with that agent you do the deal with. Yeah. And then you find out, I mean, when you ask the question, right, which is what I kind of train our people to do. Um, look, you don't have to pitch anybody. You just say, how's it going at XYZ brokerage? And yeah. it's amazing the amount of people that are just frustrated with what they don't get. And look, I meet a lot of people, uh, Justin McCabe's on here. He said something, look, the guy loves his brokerage. He loves the place he works. And that's yeah. awesome. But there's yeah. so many people that will uh, say, dude, oh, whatever. They just collect their 20% and that's it. And, you know, I don't get anything. It's like, oh, you want to come to lunch? And then, boom, they see it and it sells itself and they sign up. So, and it's you not know. it's 20% because the 20% is capping. Yeah, but I mean, like at other places, right? Yeah. Like. Exactly. They're talking about the other brokerages. The broker just takes my stuff, and uh, I needed them a little bit when I got started. But now I just do everything on my own. I'm a self sufficient agent. So most you know of the I mean, I'm talking to it's it's kind of an interesting conversation. There's been a massive shift where I've been talking to a lot of agents that have been with their brokerage for yeah. two, three, four years, ten years, twelve years, and what they're seeing is they're seeing a lot of these people that they know that are big agents in other areas like San Diego is mm -hmm. turning to EXP on a yeah. huge level. Areas like Austin, Texas, San Antonio, Texas are turning to EXP on a huge level. These big cities are finding it first. And then what's happening is these, these you know, big areas that there are a lot of people transitioning and whatnot are catching yeah. onto it now and it's starting to spark. And I'm getting these people that I never would have worked with before. I never yeah. would have had the opportunity to talk with and they're thinking, oh my gosh, David, you're at EXP. You were like the first person that I know of to make the move. Why did you do it? And I'm like, what list do you want? Yeah. <laughs> well, look, in defense of brokers, right? Because I have a lot of friends that are brokers and they're, they're great guys. Um, but there, there's two things, right? I mean, they can't offer what we offer, right? Because it's just, it's a completely different model. Um, everybody makes the blockbuster and Netflix comparison, which yeah. I don't personally love because real estate is not VHS tapes that you go rent, right? So yeah. it's not the best comparison industry-wise. But when yeah. you look at what happened with Blockbuster and Netflix, one of the interesting things is Blockbuster had a ton more money than Netflix, right? All the money in the world, Netflix starts, they make the mistake, they don't buy them, they don't do it. But somewhere along the line, they realized they made the mistake. And now Blockbuster, with all the money in the world, went and said, hey, we're going to do online streaming. I don't know if you remember that, but Blockbuster started. They tried working at Blockbuster okay. in 2003, 2004, my brother. Yeah. And so they tried to do online streaming and they yeah. tried to do the red box thing, Blockbuster boxes. But the problem with Blockbuster is that they couldn't completely change their model, right? They couldn't call their franchise owners and say, hey, we're not going to have franchises, franchises anymore. We're only going to be online. And we're only going to be in these red box type things. They were. They were, you know, weighted down by their model. And so there's nothing wrong with brokerages. They just can't do the things that EXP can do now and what we're going to do in the future, which is more exciting. Yeah. Because I, that's coming, their, their model. They can't, you know what I mean? They can't change it. And what is EXP doing now? Um, 
and what where are they headed? A lot of us are just trying to catch up with where the EXP train is headed and where it's been, where it came from. We're like, what the heck is going yeah. on? And uh, and so can you kind of tell people briefly, because this is an interesting conversation that I had last night with my grandpa. My <laughs> grandpa called me up because I got my sister in Northern California who was this, she just became this massive uh, ISA for me. She was booking massive amounts of appointment uh, appointments every day between one and six appointments daily. That's how many appointments she was booking. Yeah. Four licensed agents. She's got license now. She's rocking and rolling. And so I got her into EXP and now she's recruiting for, for, or not recruiting, attracting for EXP. And yeah. uh, she's having a lot of interesting conversations with people, but she was talking to my grandpa about it. And he says, and this is kind of an interesting thing. And this is something that I would love for you to address if you wouldn't mind. Mm-hmm. Is you have to be careful with these MLMs. You have to be careful with, with these pyramid schemes. Yeah. It, do me a, a favor, uh, grandson. I said, yes, grandpa, I will do it. And he just <laughs> look up a pyramid scheme. And I said, grandpa, I love you so much, but the EXP is look, not a, a pyramid scheme. Can yeah. you pull some of this up? What is EXP? So, you know, it, it's funny you say that. My father, said this, my father said the same thing when I explained it to him. The, and and I, we, we need to differentiate, right? Like when you talk about revenue share and residuals and all that other stuff, um, we're only making a percentage when an agent closes a deal, right? Yeah. That's much different than, you know, making a percentage when somebody signs up to sell some BS that nobody wants, right? Like real estate transactions are happening every day. Instead of a uh, 70-30 split where the brokerage gets 30%, now we've got it where agents, multiple team leaders and so on that are helping those agents are now getting that distributed up the line. So it's, yeah. it's not... You know, pyramid schemes are where you're selling people things that they don't want, or you're just making money on the fact that people are signing up and there's not really a service, right? Yeah. We're just changing the way payment happens in the real estate world, yes. which honestly, if you talk to a lot of people, the reason why the flat fee brokerages are coming up so much is because people are tired of paying these big chunks to a brokerage. So that's why we're not a pyramid scheme. But the and other thing so cool is, about it is you talk about that downline too in yeah. the influencers that you have in your downline. What's so cool about my downline is that I can actually lean on uh, David Golden in Vegas yeah. and I could lead on Rosie and I could lead on Rick Giha and I could lean on, uh, you know, all these big names, Gene Frederick. Yeah. So there are all these different people throughout my downline or mm-hmm. upline that are all getting paid that are all incentivized to yeah. help me become more successful. So they're incentivizing my growth, but they're not married to it. And so you exactly. get an opportunity where you have more yeah. collaboration because yeah. it's not broker owned. It's mm-hmm. agent owned. Yeah. So there's, there's two levels that that collaboration happens on, right? Um, yeah. Like you said, look, everybody knows the, the value is in the team, right? The value is in the agents, right? Yeah. It's, it's not like Century 21 is not where the value is. It's the agents at Century 21. That's where whatever Century 21's value is, that's where it's derived from. And so, and so the thing is, it's like we've had this model that's benefited brokers and the tops. And we realize that if agents collaborate together, there's a ton of opportunity to just grow and, and, and help each other out. And so that's what uh, the structure is different. Like I don't try to build buyers agents. I try to build agents. And I do that by having them work with our buyers, which is yeah. much, you know, which is a big difference. I mean, it's like guys, I, I know a lot of guys that are trying to build a brokerage and sell it, right? Yeah. How much harder is it to go get people to work for your brokerage and build your business as opposed to go get people that you can help build their business. That's a lot easier for me to sell. And and let's talk about that for a second, if you don't mind. And I would love to just elaborate on that. You're one of those guys, you are an intellectual influencer on the national level. And a lot of people don't realize what they're doing when they're jumping into the team building atmosphere. Mm -hmm. They're just building a team to build a team. And they're not realizing that. And, and, yeah. What they do is they do things like withholding information, which really bothers me. They say, oh, well, I don't want them to know everything because then they'll just leave. And I give people everything. And, of course, they end up leaving. And so but what you said is I'm building an agent by helping them to work with buyers. And then there's another step or you help them elaborate and become a buyer's team lead. There's so mm-hmm. many different things that can happen to where you don't have to leave a team to become yeah. more successful. So. 
you brought up the point, which was really the thing that was the eye opener for me at EXP. Like you said, you know, you want to give everybody all the information, but people yeah. are worried that if you give them all the info, they'll they'll leave. Yes. And for me, that's the goal, right? <laughs> the goal is to give them all the information and have them take off and be rock stars. Because yeah. I know if I have a bunch of rock stars, then I'll do great. And and that is why um, I can't go anywhere else, right? I've got golden handcuffs. I'm locked in because I have an organization underneath me now that I can't get anywhere else. Um, but the reason why I was so excited about it was because I'm like you. I want to add value. I'm not big on like trying to hide anything. But on the same hand, when I was in a previous place, I saw that. I was like, I'm not going to dump everything into this guy. Yeah. Yeah. And you get an opportunity now. And this is so that I told people, I told everyone, I said, yeah. this is the most selfish move I've ever made in my real estate career. I have moved to EXP. And the reason why it is selfish is it gives me the opportunity to help cultivate agents, mm -hmm. help them become fantastic agents, and then go out in the world and keep continuing to create other great agents. And you spread this fire and I'm able to continue to, uh, to benefit on a small level financially yeah. and not have them uh, and I in this relationship where we have to continue to be held to each other forever. They can go out, start a team. They can go out and practice as a solo agent and I still can continue to benefit. And so can they by being a part of EXP. And do you have something that you want to wrap up really quick uh, with EXP before you shift to LCA? Yeah, and it may it may not be a short one because because we're we're missing one of the big points. And you I just, got all day for you, Tim Macy. You, you, you just met. And the reason why I don't think you're bringing it up is because I've been here for two years, so I've yeah. benefited from it so much. And that's the stock side of it, right? Ooh, like what's up, stock. People say agent ownership, and they're like agent owned brokerage, and they kind of scratch their heads. Look, here's the deal. Like, you're not in what I call our family tree, right? For EXP. So, yes. you're not my down, you're not my organization. We probably have a couple uncles or something in common, right? But, yeah. uh, but overall, you're not. On the same hand, I'm super excited for you to be here and I'm super excited to help you out whenever you need it because we all own stock in the same company, right? And so, I am looking to bring people on. I'm looking to build my, I'm looking to do all that stuff too. But the collaboration among top agents across the country is unbelievable because yeah. we all, we're all shareholders in this organization. And so it leads to a collaboration that's on another level that I don't think people would really understand until they, until they get here, right? And, and yeah. that is what is even cooler is, is all having ownership in the company. That way we're all working together. Yeah. And, and what's so cool about that is, you know, I've got these agents like, uh, you know, Daniel Beer that I'm, we're going to see down at LCA and uh, yeah. um, and Kyle Whistle, who we're going to see yeah. down at LCA. And neither of them are in my, my downline. I'm not in their downline. Yeah. But the thing is, we all benefit from EXP becoming more successful, which is why I'm trying to bring a lot of influencers over. And yeah. I'm not having a lot of phone conversations with people, but I'm trying to let people know that the more influential intelligent people that are on the forefront of thought that are creating our own webs of information we won't need to have these outside influences we won't need to be in other people's pocket we won't be beholden to these companies that are bought we're and, and it, hit me with it and you uh you know you brought up like where is the xp going yeah i have no idea like i don't know like i know some of the things that we're working on i know some of that stuff the point is I know we're getting the best agents into the company, right? And we're not bogged down by brick and mortar, which means we're agile. So I don't know what AXP is going to do in the future, but I know if you have the best agents in the country and you're agile because of your lower expenses, you can do whatever the heck you need to do to stay alive in an industry that we know is constantly getting bombarded with threats from different areas. Yeah. And, and, and But the truth is this, the truth is, is there are certain threats out there mm -hmm. that stand to replace the lazy agent. If you are an agent that is not giving value, that is not the neighborhood expert, that is not the community organizer, that is not helping out in your, in your area, you will be replaced by an app. And mm -hmm. so what I'm telling people about eXp is by being agent owned, people don't want to, there was a time. When people were all losing their houses or, you know, when all these different things were happening, when people were looking for that big 
brand. But now that we're, we have moved towards the future and we've moved towards teams and we've yep. moved towards influencers, people are looking for a name that That's they it. can trust, not a company that they can trust. No, like, and trust. That's it. Yeah. You ready to shift to LCA, my brother? LCA, let's do it. Okay, so we've got a really cool thing coming up, LCA Coronado. Um, And what's become very cool is you've been coming up in the LCA world in the same time that I've been coming up in the LCA world. And I've been looking at Nick and Tristan like mentors of mine on an uh, influencer level. What they've been able to build with LCA is incredible. And I keep telling people, I'm just lucky to be a part of what they have going on over there. Yeah. Now, what are what is your role? You you, t- you described this very cool to me. You said I'm gonna I'm hoping to be like the Ryan Seacrest of LCA Coronado. That's what that's what we uh, we knocked back and forth. It was like yeah, that would be kind of cool. Um, no, I, I met Tristan out in Cali. Coronado gonna be doing. Yeah, so I met Tristan out in California. We we kind of hit it off, um, and then I interviewed both of them on the podcast. And uh, and the first thing I was like, guys, look, I was like, everybody's making this different video content, right? Like you're doing an interview right now. You have a show. I have a show. These other people have a show. And I was like, we we need to make, everybody's trying to make the show that everybody watches, but you can't make a really good TV show if you don't have a channel. Like you need a platform to put it on, right? And so that's that's what we, uh, I said with Real Estate Live, which is super new. So if you're watching this, um, go like it, go follow it. We're really trying to get that going. Um, And so Real Estate Live is uh, powered by lab code agents because I knew Tristan and Nick are awesome. And if I can leverage their audience, we can grow faster if we grow together. Um, And so we we took that and then, you know, LCA was happening and we're like, what if we, what if we had real estate live cover uh, lab code agents, you know, LCA live. Um, And that makes total sense. So, you know, we have some great speakers that I'm, I'm excited about because, I go to a lot of conferences and I like a lot of them, but what I'm excited about LCA is that it's a bunch of practitioners, not a lot of speakers, right? Like it's a bunch of people that are practicing real estate and not a lot of speakers. So I think the nuggets we're going to grab are going to be awesome. But when they get off the stage, when they're done talking, that's when I'm going to grab them and I'm going to dive deeper and try to get some more better video content out of them. And then we're going to drop that on the page. So talk to me for a second about LCA Coronado, who yeah. you've got speaking, you know, what, what people are speaking about, because you've been kind of a part of the back end of this, because they're going to be coming off stage. Yeah. They've got the high of all these people freaking out there. We're going to be in an electric environment surrounded by yeah. some of the top yeah. agents in the country. Well, you're be- speaking. And I'm speaking, my brother. <laughs> but more importantly, who's speaking at LCA Coronado other than David Serpa? And what's what, what, what do you got going on? Who are you excited to talk to? Um, I'm excited to talk to, it's going to sound funny, but I'm excited to talk to Aaron Brockovich just because, um, I have no idea what, what we're going to get from her. And if anything, like I like this initial conversation we're having because I love first conversations, right? So I've talked to Kyle Whistle before I've talked to you. I've talked to a lot of real estate people before, but I'm excited to talk to her because I'm interested in what she has to say. And then I know I'm going to pick like two or three things that she may have breezed over that I'm interested yeah. in, and then we're going to dive in on those. And you'd be ready, too, because I'm sure you're going to talk about some stuff, and you're going to breeze over something that I'm going to be like, wait a second, there's more to that, and then you're going to come off, and I'm going to get more out of you. I'm trying to get this figured out here, so because I didn't want it to look like you're Aaron Brockovich talking. That was not the, the right <laughs> well, way to do it. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but, so I'm going to put up LCA Live. And we'll there you go. Um, All right. So, so – What's really exciting is, and I keep bragging everybody. I'm like, dude, Aaron Brockovich is speaking. Who else do you need to know is is, is going to be there? But we've got yeah. Aaron Brockovich coming. We've got Amanda Todd coming. You've mm-hmm. got Kyle Whistle, yep. Daniel Beer, Travis Dom. Can we talk for a second about, because Travis is another one of those people who's on Real Estate Live. And yeah. uh, he's got a show called um, The Social Media Update with mm-hmm. Travis. Can you talk to me about some of the original programming that you have going on at Real Estate Live sure. powered by LCA? So Travis is a good one, right? I mean, Travis runs an awesome social media marketing company. Uh, There are a ton of bad ones out there, right? Like everybody's always hitting you up for, you know, stupid monthly fees on stupid programs. Travis is one of the very few that I would put my seal on and say, hey, you know, the guy's the man, he knows what he's talking about. And what I agreed with, with him to do was like, look, man, this stuff's changing all the time. So if you could come on 
once a week and just give us an update on the yeah. things we need to be looking out for, I think that would add a ton of value to the audience. So that's what he's doing. Um, well, I love that. You've got all these different people out there who claim to be so, you know, social media experts. Yeah. And what they're really trying to do is they're trying to sell you these long-term packages that weigh you down over time. Oh, Everyone they're crap. Sell you crap. Yeah. Everyone's going to bog you down with subscriptions, sell you this, get a cut of that. What I love about what you guys have doing, the, the programs that I've been watching on Real Estate TV, mm -hmm. is you guys aren't the, out there selling a bunch of bull crap. You guys are just out there creating original content and helping agents. And then they get to decide what they want to spend money on. And the other thing is, too, I always try to hammer in on timely, right? Because yeah. everything's changing. Look, you're, you're going to watch this a year from now, and it's going to be out of date, you know? And so we're always hammering in on, like, what should agents be doing right now? Because last year, they should have been doing Snapchat. This year, what should they be doing? Um, and so timely content is super important because so many people are out there trying to sell you last year's crap. And it's, it's hard to decipher what's what. And a lot of times you get these people that they, they get on these different platforms and what they're trying to do is they're trying to sell it to you gradually over time. Yep. And I tell people we get stuck on like the iPhone 7, iPhone 7S thing. And uh, anytime that you're going to see somebody speak live and you're booking them out two, three months in advance, know that a lot of these people that you're going to see speak live, a lot of the people like Tim Macy, a lot of the people like Travis, a lot of these people – they're still involved in it. It's not mm -hmm. like they've been out of the game 10, 15 years trying to teach you about being an influencer in real estate and how to use social media. Well, and that's what I, I'm excited about for LCA Live is because looking at that roster, like I said, it's a lot of practitioners. It's a lot of people that are doing it and doing it well. And now they're going up and talking. Like if you think about it, most speakers, right, they're speakers. Um, they start out doing real estate and then they become speakers. But at some point to me, Seems like they've just been out of the game a little too long, and now they're just talking about stuff, and they've been out of the game for a year or two. These guys that are talking to LCA, a lot of them are in the game right now, performing at a peak, and they're going to give us the best info right now. And that, that's why I'm excited about LCA. Yeah. And there are certain things that, like, hey, listen, like, as far as being like a thought, like somebody who's I like, get oh, yeah. All these coaches and whatnot, and, and like they get up there and they get up on stage. There will always be certain th things that are considered evergreen content. You know, mm -hmm. like Tony Robbins gets up and he talks. That's yeah. evergreen content. It's always going to be good because it's always going to be good. But when yeah. you're talking about practicing real estate in today's day and age and what people are talking about right now that will yeah. benefit the business right now, things like Facebook marketing with Commissions Inc. and landing pages, how to get the most dollar ad spend out of that versus paying somebody else to do it for you. There are things yeah. that you can do that you should be doing that you can do or paying somebody to do something for you so that you can calculate what you're worth hourly. But you don't know what you don't know until you realize you don't know it. I always tell people, and really quick, let me give you this this uh, this a really quick example. It's like learning to speak Pashtun, and this is a lesson that's been has been bought in blood. So if you go out there in the world and you're getting ready to go to combat, I had a buddy of mine. Uh, his name's you know I'm not going to give his name out, but yeah. he went and he learned Pashtun two months before we went to combat. He was invaluable when we went to country because he was able to speak a language that we didn't speak. Yeah. People like you, people like this man right here that speak tech that you don't speak, people like Travis that speak tech that you don't speak, Tristan, Nick, all these different people that speak languages that you don't speak. You have to listen to these people to become influential enough to know what you don't know so that you don't have to become a social media expert, but you should know how to use it. Yeah. And the other thing, I'm, I'm glad you made the, the military reference. It's like, I see so many people, you know, you have, you go out there with a team, right? And you have different people on that team. And that guy being able to speak, like, fill the spot on your team. And maybe you got a sniper on your team. Maybe you got this guy on your team. Um, but you need to look at your team and figure yep. out what am I missing, right? Am I missing an EOD guy? Am I missing a medic? Like, what am I missing? And fill those spots. And yeah. one, don't try to be all of the spots. But number two, the one that I see more people making mistakes on is don't hire yourself. You don't need another you. You know what I mean? And, and hire people that are going to fill the spots that you don't fill, not the ones that you already do. Yeah. And I think that that's so important when you break down. I, I love. So first off, you've been taught you are next to a major military base. I know that because yeah, my yeah. sister and my ex-brother-in-law went through there. But yeah. You speak the lingo, my brother. So obviously you're talking to military. You're talking to people. You probably yeah. have military directly around you, right? Yeah, I was uh, I was down here for about a year and a half for uh, pararescue. So yeah. 
I got my ass kicked for like a year and a half doing that, and I got medicaled out, and then we just hung out here. So no kidding. Yeah, yeah. You were with pararescue with who? No, I was in Indoc and all that. With the Air Force? Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, that's kind of my uh, my walkout okay. story. <laughs> okay, hey brother, I got MedSep too, but it was yeah. uh, you know I, I was lucky enough to where I was able to put off a surgery to go to Afghanistan. But the thing is, is you jumped in. You went in, you said up to when uh, I'm willing to go to the stopping of my beating heart. And that's why I think that you're of such a value. Obviously, I didn't even know that about you. Yeah, so, man. And you you know, I, I pushed palace for a couple of years, did some computer stuff, like typical chair force stuff. Yeah. And then I went, you know, and did the fun stuff. So, really? And you got injured. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think like we have a 91% washout rate and I'd say 30, 40% of that's probably injuries. It's no joke, man. I tell people when you go through that spec ops thing, not only do you yeah. got to get through that training pipeline or the, get through the initial indoc, but then you got to get through the training pipeline and everything. So, oh, um, another year. Yeah, it's crazy. My brother, I had no idea. So, anyway, yeah. so, so that's why you speak the language so well. <laughs> Military leadership, it's something that you learn. It's in it, like I tell people, Uncle Sam is one of the best trainers of leadership because it's not, hey, get this done. No. It's get this done how. And yeah. so tell me a little bit about your military experience and why, wh- how you've brought yeah. that into practicing real estate. So one, I'm interviewing you on Wednesday, and I think this is a topic we'll probably dive deep on um, and I go into because I, I love talking about this. But, you know, uh, one of the things is just that that team atmosphere uh, yeah. that, you know, it's it's a different level of it. The only thing I could connect it to is I grew up boxing. Right. And it's yeah. it's sim- similar because you're preparing for battle and you're preparing as a team. And like five of you guys are going up to fight on Saturday night. Like it's yeah. this team mindset. And, you know, if you can bring I mean, it, it's you can't compare what we do in real estate to that. But when you can bring that type of mentality in of we're doing this together, I have to be better, not just for me, but I have to be better for the guy next to me. Um, that is when, you know, I think you see a lot of the success that you do. And I mean, I've seen great leaders in real estate. And I think that's a common trait that they have is that they take responsibility to make sure not just themselves, but the people around them are successful. My brother. So I I just fell in love with you again (laughs) on this show. But um, one of the things that I'm reading right now is a book called Man's Search for Meaning by uh, Victor have you, I haven't you, read that one. I haven't read it yet. It's on the list. Gosh, it's fantastic. But one of the things that he talks about is getting out of uh, the concentration camps. And uh, and he's an Auschwitz survivor and whatnot. But he yeah. talks about um, the, the th- if you have a why, you can get by with with almost any how, which is, of yeah. course, Frederick Nietzsche. But the, the thing is, guys like you and me, when you're compelled by the guy to the left and the right of you, and your next meal and getting through the day Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, having your next smoke. That's, that's the same thing that he talked about. He said, cigarettes, the man to the left and right of you and getting through your day, you're less compelled to, um, savage your fellow team member because Mm -hmm. you were willing to go through that leadership and, uh, follow a great leader up, You know, like that's a yellow footprint thing. And the thing is, I tell people, you have to be careful with having that same mentality in business if you're not careful. Read books by great business mentors who are also military members because you have to have a certain level of separation because not the entire world operates with that same code of ethics. Yeah, you're not you're not going to have that relationship with everybody you bring on. And that is what has been difficult for me, too, is being able to say, look. This person's on. I'm gonna work with them, but they're not. Uh, they're not the team. You know what I mean? And and you know, if you're anything like me, you want everybody to be the team, right? You want the yeah. whole the whole town to be the team, but it doesn't. Yes. It doesn't work. Yeah. yeah, I always tell people all the time, like you know, everybody always tells me, "Sir, sir, but you let everybody get too close. Stop letting everybody come into your home." It's just like I love everybody. It's yeah. just one of those things that freaking happens. So, yeah. uh, Golden points out, hey, Mike Bjorkman speaking too, um, and uh, D- Debbie Reber says. Uh, good seeing you, David. You're amazing. Love you, Debbie Reber. I served with Debbie's son in Afghanistan. He was my squad leader. Uh, David Golden said, how's it going at XYZ Brokerage? Love that. Um, masterminding nationally. Love it. Um, and of course, my mom says hi. She always does. I love, my mother in does the same thing. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> Mom's always stopping in. So uh, at the end of the day, brother, um, let, let's uh, 
we, we've had a really great session here. For we've, sure. uh, we've had to go for about 35 minutes here. Um, we went through all the questions. We've had a lot of really great interactions. I'm not going to drag it out any longer than we need to. I learned a yeah. lot of great things about you, my brother. Anything in closing there, uh, Tim Macy? Uh, yeah, I got two asks. One, yep. go like like and follow the Tim Macy show because you're going to be on it on Wednesday, and we're going to dive deeper on a lot of the stuff that we were just hitting the surface on. And then two, uh, like and follow Real Estate Live because that's another one we're trying to build out. Right on, my brother. I appreciate you being on. Um, it was fantastic co- talking to a, another guy. And I told you right before I got on, I said, uh, I'm going to do something. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I want to get both those eyebrows to raise. <laughs> you can't get it done. I'm sorry. We, the, 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 just, this one just doesn't go. It just does its own thing. And this one's up all the time. You know, It's up all the time. Well, hey, man, it's uh, I've got these angry eyebrows, these big Cro-Magnon eyebrows. And, uh, and people give me trash about it all the time. But if I didn't take care of it, I'd look like a... I love it. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Over here. But love you, Tim Macy. Appreciate you, my brother. All right, brother. I'll talk to you soon. I don't know if I'll see you on Wednesday.